Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. I sing. Hey, everybody, it's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble. I'm not showing myself yet because for the next 25 minutes or so, we have a pre recorded uh, um, uh, diatribe between a friend of mine and uh, then at, uh, let's see here, about half hour past uh, the hour of the show, the uh, half hour point that uh, 25 minutes from right now, uh, we will go be talking to the citizens panel, but right now we're going to make kind of a call we always like to make. Of course, you know, we do this in kind of a weird way. We actually call our next guest um, uh, by surprise because he always opens up with something interesting. So let's dial. There we go. Waiting for Skype to actually dial a real phone number. There we go. Will he be there? Alex's guests tonight are Virginia Graham, Stan Can the Gadget Man, and Ron Horshack Palillo. <laughs> Brought to you by AIDS Diet Candy. Lose weight with AIDS. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I just thought I'd take it back to the good old innocent 70s. Stan Can, the what man again? I forget it. The, the, ga the Gadget Man. Yeah, I remember that. Stan he, Can, the Gadget Well, Merv, uh, here's, here's a can opener that's also a skate key. I made it. You might want to <laughs> look at that there. And here's a top hat with a spring on it. So when you hit the ceiling, you'll, you'll bounce right back there. Ooh. And now, Monty Rock the Third. <laughs> I, want, I wonder whatever happened to Stan. I wonder whatever happened to Stan Can, the Gadget Man. I would assume he died, and they buried him in one of his gadgets. Well, <laughs> Merv, it's a coffin uh, with a shoe on that just easily slips into a hole that's too small for it. Ooh, <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Stephen Pearl. Thank you, thank you very much. I hope you are uh, loving, will be relieving these magic memories with me. Now, did you do that thing for Bubbles the other night? Yeah, yeah, that was fun. His big three seven, <laughs> his big metric year in comedy. Yeah, uh, yeah, a metric year in comedy. You know, I told yeah, him. The, I the said, best. I said, you wait for your thirty fifth, or you wait for your fortieth, but your thirty seven, you know, it's kind of like, all right, so what? You're going to do thirty eight next year? Well, we couldn't do the 35th because they had Peter Lemon Jello that night. It was sold out. We can't do the 40th because most of us will be dead by then. So we figured 37 was a nice round number. Yeah, a nice round number. So it went well, huh? I had fun. Yeah, I did. I did. Well, everyone pretty. Everyone yeah. did like material, which was good. But I did. Uh, it was bubbles. A big event for bubbles, I guess, is rise to the middle. So I did a George Jessel style roast. I'll never forget the first time yeah. I saw Larry Brown. Of course, back then he went under the name Larry <laughs> Crib Death Brown, and it was me who convinced him to change it to bubbles, which sounded sunnier and more effervescent. Now, since and I did stuff like that. And, uh, you know, he was soon spotted by Dana Carvey, who was in town filming the Peter Torch story. <laughs> by the way, Dana still wears the same wig, and mine doesn't look natural. And that kind of got hit, and he kind of got grown. So you can't say anything about Dana. This is Miranda. Uh, uh, and it was fun. I did that for about seven minutes, and, like, half the crowd was really into it. Half the crowd was, well, what's he doing? So <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> it, all, that's, according to that, plan. that's always been the case with you, hasn't it? Yeah, and not always, you know, uh, but uh, I didn't know what was, I just wanted to do something new and special and this and that, and it, I guess I, it worked on the left side of the room, it didn't quite work on the right side of the room, but I don't care, it was But fun. you see, at this point in your career, you have a kind of I don't care attitude. <laughs> when, when, when you hit 60, you're on borrowed time, anything, the bank can collect any days, it may take 35 years and make happen that day so yeah, i don't care yeah, so. but uh you know in my uh, uh, career uh, uh <laughs> whatever that was um yeah i just i just wanted to do something different and i had i had a good time doing it bubbles loved it yeah I pretty much did it mostly for bubbles and, and becky was there she said, oh man you're insane you're insane so i knew that was the seal of approval <laughs> the seal of approval right exactly you've always been insane that's why i like i've always been that's insane. why i like talking to you i don't know what to expect that's next it. Outside the box, baby. Yeah. Outside uh, the box. Uh, so, uh, One toe uh, in the did, box, did he, get, did he get a good crowd there? 
Yeah, 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 it was all right. The, the, the top was empty. The bottom part was pretty full. It was nice. It was, it was a nice crowd. How many? How many? The Marin people show up at 7.59 if the show's at 8. You know, it was like, oh, nobody's going to show up. Then at 7.59, they all show up. Hello, we're here in our best Tommy Bahamas. Yeah, we well, have thin what? skins. Don't use too many verbs. Uh, you're, 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 ta- you're talking about so, the uh, Throckmorton Theater, which uh, I'm, place, I'm yeah, not. So I'm, like I'm, I'm never, I've, I've never been in that place, but it's an old theater, right? It's an old theater. It's Charlie Chaplin played there in the day before they had sound. Oh, really? Uh, there was no sound back then, yeah. Wait a minute, <laughs> Everyone Throckmorton. was silent before oh, 1927. Uh, but okay, it's the, like over 100 years old, and uh, that's what they tell me. Wait a minute, was, was, was the Throckmorton Martin. Theater a, 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 what do you call it, a, a, a an old movie house in Marin? Yes. I don't I, I don't know if they, they <laughs> might they might have shown movies there. I've seen them show things on the screen there, so Is it, it is was, it in uh, doubt it was, it was, oh, mostly a live thing, but I'm trying to remember what the theater was, the movie theater was in Mill Valley. And I don't think it was the Throckmorton. I think it was No, Cal- no. There's a there's a theater up the street from it that you you're probably right, thinking right. about. Uh, so how big is uh, how, it is on Throckmorton as soon as you turn yeah. over the block, there it is. There how big is this, how big is the theater? The theater seats of uh, 400, maybe, something like that. Uh, I'm not bad with numbers. I can't look at a room and say, well, it either seats like 15 or 12,000. I, I can't. I'm not really good at that. But uh, if, for you, I'll go back there and I'll count all the seats. Okay. Go, uh, but uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's a small theater. In fact, nice, in fact go, go, right, go right now and we'll wait. Okay. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> three hours later, see, we can do it. We can, the magic of radio. Yeah, we uh, we had to cut take but, for three hours while he went to the Throckmorton yeah. Theater to ah, see how ah, many. Ah, ah, I'm back. Oh, once you jump the toll, you really got to drive fast. So anyway, there's 462 <laughs> seats there. And Lucy says hi. She's the owner. Yeah. Hi, Lucy Mercer. She's the greatest. Yeah. I love the people there. Good people. Yeah, good. Good, good, good. Anyway. So we had fun. We had a good time. Yeah. So uh, what's what's new in in your life? Anything interesting? Uh, yeah, other from that, nothing, you know, just uh, sitting around on Parkland Farm, and uh, not, not a thing, man, not a thing. We just uh, sitting around, and uh, what am I doing later? I got to uh, go pick up a prescription. That'll be fun. Yeah. You know, my, my wife, you know, I'm like Norman Fell on a bender. I'm really excited. Let me, let me, let me, tr- old guy. let me try to guess the, the prescription, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, how old are you now? 62. Sixty-two. Uh, I mean, that glass looks young. Look that one up. Kid. Yeah, sixty-two. So I'm I'm kind of guessing the drug is either uh, for your blood pressure or something doing with to do with the blood, or it has to do with your prostate. Damn, you're good. Blood pressure, ding, ding, ding. Give the man a cigar. Start playing. <laughs> because <laughs> met, I can't even pronounce it. Metapolo or something thins the blood. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, see, yep. the thing is that uh, at, uh, as time goes on, they'll they'll add more drugs. They'll, they'll, they'll like this one. <laughs> oh, I've got plenty now. And then they'll add. I've got drugs to prevent me from hitting people with a hammer. So, yeah. You know what the problem is, though, that you, um, as you get older, uh, you don't have a union. That you can rely on to get your medical care from. Like I have, oh, God, I have, sa- no, no. I have SAG after, and I've found out not only from other people, but now from personal experience that my SAG after, or it was basically the SAG uh, health plan, is probably one of the best in the entire country. Uh, uh-huh. And 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 yet, comedians never had a union. I mean, you you've got a nope. union if you do some TV and you become part of SAG-AFTRA, uh, or, or yeah. uh, you know, the I think the, do they still have the American Guild of Variety Artists? Uh, that was another one that that you could have belonged to in your profession. But there was there's no union for comedians, and God knows there are I enough think, comedians in this country to do it. Oh sure, anyone needs it. I think people have talked about starting one in the past, or maybe they have started them, and they just took off with the money or something to the Catskills. I don't know, but, you know, uh, you know, Dick Bach, Catskills legend, is starting a comedy union. Send him $200 and you will be covered. Well, the co- so I've the seen cl- little things when people try <laughs> talking about it, but I don't think it's really happened. The club owners always had this attitude they were doing you a favor, you know, that that you needed the stage time to hone your craft, and so therefore they didn't. Oh, yeah. that, was, that was Mitzi Shore's th- philosophy at the comedy store. Yeah. We don't have to pay you. Why should we have to pay you? You're you're learning your craft here. 
Well, she should pay you yeah. because she is charging admission and making a bundle. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Throw them a little something. Wasn't was there ever a but, strike oh, at the comedy store? Do I remember one? There was a major strike. It was in 1979. There were people. One guy jumped off a roof because of it because he stopped getting to work because of it. And uh, there are still people today who aren't talking to each other because of it. Almost 40 years later, it was. Uh, I was just up here brand new. And I'm so glad I was left out of it because it, it made the news. It was all over the place. And it looked real, and it got really, really, really ugly. I know well, people. Well, finally, it on finally, sides. you went to L.A. and you must have worked the comedy store. Did they at, at, at the yeah, point? I sure did. At the point you went down there, did they pay you? Oh yeah, I was getting paid, and they were paying okay too. So it was uh, you get if, if she put you in the main room on a weekend, which she did, you get a piece of the house, and it was always packed. It was a big room, so you know that. And you get like what was it, twenty five to fifty a spot in the uh, original room, fifty on the weekends, I think twenty five in a week. And then the comedy boom ended in the early to mid nineties, and they cut the money in half, and then they cut it in half again. <laughs> and now you get paid in king corn stamps. Yes, yeah, available it, it, at any Bohack supermarket, but nowhere else. Yeah, don't take Bitcoin. Uh, no, <laughs> no, but I mean, it, so it, you get paid in Mitzi's lucky bucks, chocolate coin. Yeah, but I mean, there's never been, you know, the reason why you have a union is not only to set prices and and to ensure certain level of of wages for your your members, but also for sure. things like health uh, benefits and and pension yeah, funds oh, and great. things like that. Yep. And uh, yeah, it, world, the yeah. fact that there's never been a, you know, they probably figured. That, you know, comedians eventually, if they do well at all, are going to come under after or SAG or uh, sure. um, and now SAG after uh, yeah. and and they're going to be covered. But uh, but, you know, I, I think about those those guys who are never going to be doing a lot of TV, you know, that you're just punching yeah. out the clubs uh, for the rest of their lives. Road guys, cruise ship guys. Yeah, there's all kinds of levels of working comics. So. And, and then there's but, uh, and then there's Perry Kurtz. So, uh, <laughs> oh man, I saw, I saw him and another comic who's like at his level going at it on Facebook the other day. It was hysterical. Really? <laughs> what was going yeah, on? Was what was like, go, what was going on? But let me let me no, first of a, all let me first of all say to the people who listen to this, and they're not a very a lot of them, not like I used to have, but there are enough. <laughs> we, yeah, so to get time. you was, in on the joke yeah, here, big man. Perry Kurtz, if we were to say who was the worst comic in America, I think his name would be mentioned more often than not. Right? <laughs> yeah, but he's on a, I would say he was on an equal level with a fellow named Perry Gillespie and the two that were going at it. Pe <laughs> Perry? And each, each quip landed with the grace of the Hindenburg. Oh, boy. Well, what were they arguing about? Uh, I just uh, Perry made an alleged joke, and Perry said, well, you should stick to karaoke. And Perry said, yeah, well, I make a living playing assisted living facilities. What do you do? Oh, yeah, Mr. Cheap Shot. Well, I'm Mr. Rubberface, and I'm big in the southern Daytona area. <laughs> Hell, yeah, well, I'm big in the 818 area code on Wednesday afternoon. Oh, God. Like, Woo! <laughs> well, every now and then I'll fun, get... Fun, I'll, fun, fun. Every now and then I'll get a Facebook message from Perry Kurtz. And it will always be about something he did, which is, thank God, I only get a message from him about once every five years. Uh, oh, that's good. <laughs> and, and the last time was a couple of weeks ago where he had wound up appearing on uh, The Late Show with James Corden. The Late yeah, Late Show with did, James he Corden. he played the keyboard with his tongue. Yeah, but he acted like it says Perry Kurtz on James Corden's, with, with James Corden on Late, whatever. It made it seem like, and now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Perry Kurtz, and he comes out and does his comedy, right? No. Yeah. Or he sits on the panel. <laughs> no. It was like yeah. something where the audience members, it was like audience member talents. Yeah, yeah, like bar tricks or something. <laughs> yeah, so he had like a yeah, the keyboard. Boy knows how to push himself. He, the boy had, can hustle. he had a keyboard, and he played it with his nose. God. Yeah, there you go. Actually, with his tongue. So yeah, tongue was his. What was his tongue? We we, we Kurtz experts. We we watch all the videos. Yeah, you're and, you're, 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 you're big, big collection of Kurtz videos. So it, you have the whole thing. Yeah, it, we believe it. Well, it's Kurtzomania. So you know, it, it, Kurtzomania. I have enough to put a, the worst meth head to sleep. It's insane. God, you know, I mean, uh, you you're, you're not wor working that much because you really kind of have. It's not like giving up the ghost. You just. 
hey, you did it all those years, and now you're kind of tired of it, maybe? I, I did it over 40. I'm not saying I'm tired. Right now, I'm on a hiatus. I, I did the theater, the Prom War Theater, because that was fun, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm, I'm going to go to L.A. maybe by the summer for a week or 10 days and do some rooms down there and see some old friends, and I want to do a few rooms up here. Just do it a little more, but I really haven't been doing it much for the past several months because I haven't wanted to. Yeah. And I don't want to fucking travel anymore. Yeah, oh, boy, I've got a gig in Indianapolis, and if I'm lucky, I'll only owe $42 when I Let get me off. Let me I, ask you this. Let me ask you. can't use verbs and... Let me ask you this: Does age do does age catch up with you as a comedian? I mean, where big, you you kind of go? Time. I don't seek it. Yeah, I don't seek adventure as much as I used to. I don't want to travel. I've been all over the world, man. I played. I've been in like uh, I've been in Japan. I've been in Asia like four or five times. Because so if, a, I, if a comedian's going to, I want to say, I, if a comedian wants to be what? a stand-up comic and he wants to make money, he has to be a road warrior. He, you know, you're just not going to make your money. You, it. Well, there was a time. When I was doing a show in San Francisco, where you could make a living as a comedian and just stay in San Francisco, that's right. And that we did. Yeah, but uh, if, if but if you really wanted to make money, you had to go on the road. Now I know Bobby Slayton, yep. my old friend. Uh, right. he, he's been a road he's warrior road warrior for years. I mean, he's been a road dog. Yeah. He's been out there. He he doesn't know what city he's in when he wakes up in the morning. You know. Yeah. And I. He finally, he finally got sick and tired of it. He took six months off. Yep. Finally, he just said, "I can't, uh, I can't do it anymore." You have to, you yeah. have to, you have to. He looked in the mirror. Said, "I look 127." <laughs> so I'm, what? I'm taking some time off. What you hope you've got by the time you reach your age is a sitcom. You know, home, you know, playing the uh, janitor or something like that. You know, <laughs> and uh, Bobby never landed a sitcom. He was in pilots. I remember. Do you know what Bobby? Yeah. Uh, this is a good, interesting story. Bobby had me make up for him a because I had an editing system. All right, uh, a uh-huh. reel of his work. Okay, so that he, uh-huh. when he goes someplace, he could hand him a tape, and you know they can look at it. Yeah. Exactly. One of the things that I had to use in the demo was a part he played that was only in a pilot and it never made it. Now you remember remember Roger uh-huh. Rabbit, you remember the Roger Rabbit days where cartoon characters yeah, inter- sure. interacted with human beings. Well, this was yeah. a series about a cartoon character who interacted with real human beings. In other words, he was against real backgrounds. And the yeah. show was called The Pink Panther. And they decided they were going to do a series of the Pink Panther, but like you would uh-huh. do Roger Rabbit with him playing off of live, real people. And Bobby yeah. was the voice of the Pink Panther. And uh, he was really... He done was, some stuff, yeah. It was really good, but it never made uh-huh. it, you know. Never made and, it. And he did oh, a, Bobby, I saw he did a voice on Family Guy once. He was a casino Indian. Yes, he yes. Did, uh, he had a little part in Get Shorty. He was, he was in the Ed Wood movie. He did a little parts, but he did some stuff. But then, you know, you could either parlay that into something really big or it could just do a few things well, and then you get nothing else. You he, know, who he, knows? He had a major role in Bandits uh, with Bruce uh, Willis and uh, bu- 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 what's his name? Uh, I'm trying to forget. My, mind, my mind's going these days. I forget it. But anyway, he did that. He did Bandits. It was also uh, the female actress, Kate Blanchett, was in that. Okay, And uh-huh. he was one yeah. of the main characters in it. He plays a newsman yeah. who's telling their yeah, life he story. Play. He was very good in that. And he also, he was in Dreamgirls. But don't, uh-huh, I didn't know that. don't <laughs> blink. He's the comedian on stage before they go on stage. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what I do. It's like Belzer with a movie. And, and yes, movie. he was in Get Shorty. And he had, a, he had one scene uh-huh. in Get Shorty, but he was the casino owner. And yeah. uh, uh, he very good. He was you know. in it. He, he I, on the cutting room floor. He's if, in a movie. if I were a producer, I w- uh, also Woody has taken a liking to him. So he was on Woody Allen's TV show. Yeah, that's right. That's and, right. And then he Allen. was in Woody Allen's last movie, but then his scene was cut out. Supposedly, <laughs> one of them. So uh, I, I was going to use him, but I was busy at the preschool just <laughs> looking about. <laughs> pedophile, pedophile. I like middle-aged girls, nine, ten, eleven. But with all, I couldn't help it if my office was adjacent to the place. But if I were, if I were, if I were a producer, I would, I would say, hey, this this guy with his voice and everything, he's very usable. Yeah. He's very no, usable. He's definitely a type, and yeah. You know, but he. But then again, there's a million types, so yeah, you know, we're gonna get the 
Well, I think the downside is is that Bobby has never been a really good actor. You know what I'm saying? Uh, In other words, Bobby is a great, probably the, I still think one of the best stand-ups I've ever seen in my life. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. doubt, But when it came to acting, he always felt flummoxed by acting. And he never knew how to just be him. You know? Yeah. He never knew how to say a line and be him. Uh, yeah. and, and I think as years have gone on, he's gotten better at it. But, and now this thing he did with Woody on the, that TV show that Woody had, I thought he was terrific. You know, he's yeah. finally been able to, is able to act, but it may be too late because he's also what? He's got to be over 65. Uh, oh, you know, I think he's about my age. About your age a of little. I look a lot younger, but uh, I, uh, I ain't a lot of I mean, he's a little less than 65. I haven't asked him. I think yeah. he's my age, or he might be a couple months younger than me, actually. With the really? Okay. Together. Well, in any event, when you get to reach that age, there is definitely an age bias. There's no question oh, about it. Without a doubt, it. the gray list, man. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, it may be, you know, with all the women who are griping about and bitching about, you know, me too, and the guys don't give us equal pay, and we don't do uh. this, and we don't do that, you know. Uh, the, the fact is that the group who is, I think, the most put upon in this country are people of age because they're completely dismissed. They're dismissed by the industry. And unless you started making like, yeah, look, but we can point to, you know, Christopher Plummer. Yeah. But he was in it when he was 35. Okay. Yeah. Judy Dench. Yeah. She was in it when she was a, a really sexy looking 22, you know, yeah, you got like Harrison Ford, Al Pacino. They've been in it forever, so you know. And they, yeah, they will and work even they, time, and, and even they can't get the roles they used to get. You oh, know. of course not. They're not yet. Yeah, they're like supporting roles. Or I mean, Pacino now is yet. is down to doing HBO all the time. You know, so <laughs> yeah, you'll see me on Celebrity Password with Frank Sucky Jr. Cool. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Celebrity Password. <laughs> Wasn't uh, you know they, they called celebrity password, but wasn't there always a celebrity on password? If I remember yeah, correctly, like, of course. Yeah, uh, it, it, a it, celebrity it, and a regular person. A celebrity and a regular person. Yeah. Yeah. Here's Housewives. Sue Perkins from Parma, Ohio, playing along with Ronnie Shell. Yeah, and I, I love it when when sometimes they couldn't even play the game right. You know, like. The, oh, pass- yeah. the password oh, yeah. is like pencil, kind of lingus, ding, 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 ding. Holy shit, this game is big. The password is kitchen. Okay. Um, um, uh, Hitler. Uh, kitchen. Ki- kitchen. Ding, 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 ding. Kitchen. No, you said the word. You can't do that. Yeah, yeah you said the word. Yeah. <laughs> they say like more than one word. Place where you cook food. No, you gotta do one <laughs> word. You moron. <laughs> you jump. <laughs> Could, Almost a liberty press one for you, my friend. Could you only use one word? Was that it? You have to use one word, yes. Oh, wow. I remember there's a big scandal because humorist Henry Morgan was on, and uh, the password was Cassie, and he said Chewy, and he, or he said something. Wait a minute. And, hold uh, on. He started hold, hold. chewing with his mouth, yeah. and he, you're not supposed to do pantomime. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Turn down the TV set, will you? Son of a bitch, turn down that techno pop shit. I don't want to hear crap work. I left the door. I, I I left the door open because I didn't no, expect no, she was coming it, home early today. But it's not uh, big time in New York, so you know. Oh Lord, what have you? But no, what I was uh, going to say is that uh, um, uh, uh, Henry Morgan, uh, uh, you, you know who is who is the Godfather to? Uh, I have no idea. David Feldman. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it kind of makes sense. <laughs> well, of course, his father was Chester Feldman, who produced all those shows for uh, uh, Goodson Todman. And uh, Henry I Morgan was always that. like a panelist on some of those shows. And they were very, they knew the, you know, they were in, Henry and they were good friends and so on. So when Feldman was born, they made him the godfather. <laughs> Henry Morgan, and believe me, he got his and he inherited his bubbly personality and his way with the ladies. Oh, I remember he got the years ago. He was famous for having lost a sponsor big time, because it was like some shoe company, like Floorsheim or whatever. And he was doing the ad, and he used to always ad lib, you know, to kind of make the ad funnier and so on. Yeah. And finally, at the end, he said, "I wouldn't be caught dead wearing a pair of these shoes." <laughs> 
Mm. I wouldn't rub this on a fat lady's cunt. How about that? Yeah, there's a call from Florsheim. Uh, they want yeah, off their deal with us. Off yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's it. Henry Morgan. Henry he Morgan, in case people, laughs, people see, humorous. we mentioned Henry Morgan. Nobody knows who the fuck we're talking about. But who we're talking yeah. about, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, a guy who was maybe one of, at his time one of the funniest comedians on radio. He was oh, yeah, he very, was dry, very, very, dry. very dry, very funny, very yep. avant-garde. But people will never remember Henry Morgan. I doubt if some people remember Paul Newman. Okay, you know, it, yeah, it's yeah, gotten yeah, that way. People don't know who Bob Hope is anymore. Johnny Carson is insane. It's you, like the millennials have no idea who these people are. You die, they cease offering you work. Okay, so anyway, there hey, you listen, we take we, over, it's over, baby. We've run out of time here, Stephen Pearl. God. Holy crap! When you have the best time ever, it's, it's more fun than Kingsburg Amusement Park. I tell you, we have, and we found that theme too. Yeah, that's right. Amazing. <laughs> Go to Kingsburg Amusement Park. We have rides. Yeah, we we have next time I'll tell you about a commercial from that era that was just as creepy. Oh, okay. Let's do it next time. For the Traver the Travelers Motel. Remember that one. Talk to you in a couple of weeks. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. There we go. Okay. Hello, everybody. Yes, I decided tonight not to wear a hat. I, I, fuck it. You know, uh, there are some people watching the show. There hardly, you know what it is? There's hardly anybody listening to this show anymore. I'm serious. I went over there. They're like, I don't know, 10 people listening to it? Because they get to the GabNet page for the audio, and uh, hmm, they go, huh, huh. Okay, um, hi, you know, we can watch the video. It's right here on this page because it's on the gabnet.net page. Now, I'm making a big mistake here. Uh, radio is my first profession. I care more about radio than I do about TV. But somehow, everybody wants to see the video and they figure, I don't have to listen to the audio. So I'm either thinking of cutting one of the two, of two things off, either not broadcasting it, <laughs> Uh, on audio or not broadcasting it on video and making driving everybody back to the uh, audio again. Uh, neither of which I'm, I'm threatening, but I never follow up on my threats, unfortunately, and I should. But uh, And then a lot of people, they don't even listen because they know they can listen anytime they want to in a 24-hour period. But, you know, you, you can't always count on that because today I fucked up on my feed on the Ramble, and on the um, uh, Jack and Amy show, and it wasn't posted there. So unless you go and, uh, in fact, was it posted to, let me see here, was it posted to uh, iTunes? I think, yeah, I think it, it, it went to iTunes, uh, but it, uh, yeah, yeah. Where, where do I, how do, where do I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it got posted to iTunes, so you could still get it at iTunes. But only one person complained they couldn't hear my show, so nobody's listening to it. I, I you know, because they can get the video. The video is there, up in the right-hand corner of the gabnet.net page. So, you know, all these things I know because I created that. Uh, and uh, anyway, I'm sitting here waiting for somebody to call because I've got the lines open. I'm ready to go and to talk to people and uh, uh, do whatever this thing is we do as a, um, as a very frustrating um, thing that we do. Uh, it's frustrating because uh, they say that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same result. And that's pretty much what we do here every night. I do it every night, and we pretty much get the same result. Different discussion, but same result. Uh, so anyway, I sit here, and I'm waiting for people to call. And uh, I, uh, I had a, a weird day today uh, uh, dealing with uh, tech support. You know, uh, life has become terrible in the world of tech support. If you have something you rely on, and then you want to call somebody to get help with it, uh, tech support sucks. It just sucks now. Used to be in the old days, you know, in the first, in the old days when I was a young man. Oh, here comes, uh, uh, 
Here comes Jeff Stein. At least Jeff Stein is calling tonight. Hello there, Jeffrey. How are you? I'm good. How are you today? Well, I'm, I'm talking about my adventures with tech support. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, and I, I it, it has gotten worse and worse in the old days. And when I say old days, I'm saying old days. I'm talking about maybe the early 1990s, maybe, maybe a little earlier than that. If you had a problem, you called tech support. There was a guy down in Silicon Valley, some nerd they hired, who went, well, let's work this through. We can solve this problem for you. And, and now you get a guy named Dinesh in Bombay who doesn't, barely knows how to speak English. And, uh, you know, you don't get any help. If you, God forbid you actually had a technical problem and you had to deal with this guy. And then I have like GoDaddy where I do all my, I have all my server stuff there. You know, the, the, all the audio is there and uh, all the, uh, the, uh, the gabnet.net is there and so on. And it used to be that when I called them, I'd get somebody and they go, oh, yeah, we can fix that problem. Let's take a look at it. Okay, wait a minute. I'll get this. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, you're, you're in business. Now they say like, you know, Press two if you want domain support. So you press <laughs> you press two, right? Domain hosting support. You press two, and then you, the guy says yes. And what is your name? And I give him the name, which I've already done uh, when I was signing on. And uh, he says, "How can I help you?" And I tell him my problem. And the first thing he says is, "Well, I'll have to send you over to hosting." Well, wait a minute, GoDaddy. I just called i i pushed the button for hosting but you've got to send me over to hosting yeah how long will that be uh there's about a 15 minute wait <laughs> yeah. what and so i gave the other day when i they gave me that i gave up because i have been trying to have one problem fixed over and over and over again and i've been kept online interminably one night i was online till well, i got off here at midnight I started with a call with them at like 12.15. They didn't have the problem solved till 1.45. And then the next day, the problem came back. <laughs> That's tech support, folks. Now, today, the one I got is I, I have uh, another server I use. I use a thing up in Canada called My Hosting. been using it ever since they started. They started in... Uh, uh, 1987, and that's when I first started using them. It was in 1987, and uh, I've seen their quality of service decline, decline, decline to where you don't even get it. Because I call up their tech support today, only because I want one piece of information. Hi, Rob. Good evening, gentlemen. You've probably gone through this yourself. I, I had one question. Here was the question. Is the plan I have with you, do I have unlimited space? Because I wanted to know. So I would know, I wanted to know whether I would run out at a certain point or not run out at a certain point. And guess what? He says, well, I'd be very happy to help you. He, you know, he's got such a thick accent. He can ba barely spell my name in, in English, okay, uh, that I know I'm in for the ride of my life. I'm asking one simple question. Now, uh, Rob, if you were working at tech support, what would you look for in order to find out whether I had an unlimited plan? I would ask you, get your name, and then I would look at your account and yeah. just look at the settings on your account. Mm -hmm. Excuse uh, me. I, it's the same I, for everybody. I, 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 ha know. I have to go away for two minutes. <laughs> So he goes away for two minutes. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. When he comes back and he goes, uh, you uh, have a plan uh, with it's uh, a, a, a whole bunch of other uh, people and uh, you can have as many people listening to you at the same time as you want. I went, wait a minute. <laughs> I said, that isn't the question I asked you. I asked you, do I have unlimited uh, space on the server? And he said, Okay, can you hold on for two minutes? And he goes away for another two minutes, and he come back, comes back and says, yes, uh, you, uh, you have uh, the ability to have as many people listening to you at the same time. He comes back with the same answer as he did before. He said, no, I'm trying to... F this took him three tries of two minutes each. About 20 minutes later, he comes back and says, oh, you have unlimited uh, space. And I'm going, that's all I wanted. 
That's the only answer I wanted. Here comes the payoff, okay? His name was D Dinesh, I think. Uh, and uh, I, I then go on to my hosting site, and I go to contact, and it says, you know, what do you want support with or whatever? And I said, the other. And then I said, I have a complaint about your technical support. I've been with you for almost 20 years now, and it has gotten worse and worse and worse, and today was the worst. And I explained what happened. And I said, you better do something about this sooner. You're going to start losing a lot of people. <laughs> and I get a, a letter back, and it's from Dinesh. Dinesh owns the company. <laughs> yeah, I think he's, he, I think he, and I, I even tried calling back once, thinking maybe I'd get another guy, and I got the same guy again. Is maybe I, they probably only have one guy working their technical support. <laughs> and the reason I had to go away for two minutes was to answer all the other calls. I don't know. But, I mean, that's, that's technical support now. Suppose something really goes down. I've got to go through that. I had a very nice experience today. Oh. I, I called Apple Care uh -huh. to see if they could find uh, in my iCloud the files that were on the desktop that I thought I saw on my iPad. Mm -hmm. They couldn't help me, but uh, their efforts were uh, beyond uh, fantastic. Uh, I am so pleased with iCloud service. I'm going to have to use this uh, uh, thumb drive and just fire up the mini Get off of it what I need, yeah, and and, and then and, send it and then off ship to it off to a guy you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a guy, a guy I know with an address. Yeah, a guy you so, know with an address. You know, I, Apple I think does a great job of uh, tech support. I've never had to use them oddly enough, never had yeah, to. Some. but I've often heard that they're awesome. But you know, at those prices, they goddamn fucking better be because they do. Well, but you know, that's not that they don't look at it that way. Come, businesses don't look at it that way. Well, you know? I, 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 I don't know. I think if there are certain businesses and you go, how can they do it this cheaply? Become to find out. You, you know? know, you know, there's a difference between value and cost. And uh, with Apple, I find value, and it's worth the cost. Yeah. Whereas uh, when I don't get the value, then no matter what the cost is, it's too high. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let me see here. Unknown phone number calling. Who is the unknown caller who doesn't want to use their video? Who is, who is this? Who is this? Hello? Lost both of them. Okay. Unknown yeah, phone, phone number. Okay. Got a big bag over from his head. Huh? <laughs> The unknown caller has got a the paper, the oh, unknown, bag that. over his head. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I will say I, I deal with this company, and it's called Instant, was it Instant TV? Uh, I could get the oh, name yeah, for the it. the one that does your Roku. Does my Roku, yeah. I see it on the uh, bottom. Yeah, 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 on the bottom. That's because I got their $4.95 a month plan. Okay, so I don't mind if they put that little ad at the bottom for those prices. All right? Uh, every time I write this guy with a problem, he's right there replying to me and trying to help me out. You know, he even has a phone number if I want to call him, but I really don't want to bother him. He was, I was having a problem with something and he was going through hoops to try and help me for my lousy four ninety five a month, you know, and, and he has something like I had a couple of thousand customers. So, you know, and some of them may, spending a lot more money with them than I do. But, man, I, I've got to tell you, uh, if you ever go to my site, you'll see the name of the company, TV Channel, I think it's called. What's it called? It's no. Instant TV, I'm pretty no. sure. Uh, it's, called, uh, it's called Instant TV Channel for Roku. Mm -hmm. And i got to tell you, if you ever want to put together a Roku channel, it's the best, easiest way to do it. And this guy is Johnny on the spot. I, there's even a free plan, Okay. And if you sign up for the free plan, I bet he helps you just as much. I can guarantee you I'll be the last person to set up a Roku channel that you'll ever see. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm, it's, simpler, I, it's simpler than you think with this company. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. And for forty nine ninety five, I could get rid of his little commercial on there, but I don't really care to. But uh, 
Uh, you know, for the heck of it, you ought to ask ask Apple to do something for you and just see how uh, amazing their Apple Care is. They don't ask you, is it in warranty? Is it right. that? Is it the other thing? That's they right. just help you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, hi, Patrick. Uh, I would do that, except I don't have any reason uh, to do that because all of my stuff is still working, you know. No, so you get my Mac Mini. Huh? <laughs> Which is the testament in itself. The hardware just works. It, 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 yeah, it, 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 absolutely it works. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's terrific, it's you know. Silly. Hmm? I mean, you know, the, the uh, Apple Developers Conference is, what, June? It's coming up. Yeah. And I, today, you know, I get this eye drop, I think it's called news, eye drop news. Yeah. How I got on this thing. But it's kind of cool because it's all... Apple related news is, you know, comes as an email mm -hmm. and they were talking about the WDC coming up and, you know, what's Apple going to do in the next version of the operating system, you know, iOS 12 and all this. And then when, when I hear emojis, I'm like, who oh, gives a rat? I mean, really emojis. Uh, let me put it this way. What, what shit. more can they do with the phone? You uh, know? Uh, I know it's becoming difficult, uh, but and 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 they're not gonna they're not really working the PC market that much. I mean, even the Mac Minis they sell them, but not a lot. You know, uh, their biggest product is the iPhone, is the iPad. And well, how are you going to make them better than they are already? Uh, you pretty well created an obsolete product just by the fact that. I can own my uh, my iPhone. I, I I kept it on, held on to my last one for three years because, quite the frankly, it was working just fine. <clears throat> there's a point at which the operating system doesn't uh, download to the older versions. Well, that and, that no, there's been a long time since that happened. They, so, uh, huh? Here are seven things to expect at the next uh, conference. The next Another, Mac uh, conference. A more, aff a more affordable HomePod. That will fall in line more at the prices of, and this is all rumor-based kind of stuff because Apple's very, very, you know. Uh, so a more affordable HomePod. Uh, the next one is they make you jump through hoops here when you. Uh, new software updates for the Mac, uh, <coughs> and new updates for the watch. Yeah. Um, iOS 12, and they again. Uh, the biggest thing here is emojis and yeah who who cares about the emojis i mean i don't get it used an emoji maybe the thumbs up or the thumbs down but Poss a possible smile well, well, well you well you've got an emoji on your uh, iphone x that can actually emulate your face right phil the, i don't know the, don't they're at, called an emojis yeah you've got them on the iphone you shouldn't even get a phone like that you don't deserve it okay <laughs> Well, uh, you know what happened as I was ready to Skype in? You said the lines are open. All of a sudden, all the utilities went out and uh, lights went off. And I have a, uh, a battery backup and it didn't work. Uh, well, uh, everything went down. Wow. And, let's, and well, I don't have the right cord plugged into it. Let's just be glad your pee bag doesn't have to have electricity. Yeah. But, uh, then it was asking me for uh, uh, identifications to log back in that I didn't know. If you, <laughs> you didn't know, remember. remember. And... I'm getting to the point. I, I, you know, I, I don't know what it is lately, but I'm just forgetting to do things. Like yesterday I was supposed to call uh, uh, Stephen Pearl, and I forgot to call him. And then last night I didn't post my show and I didn't post the intersection show. And I went through all the process I thought of doing it. I just, I, I, I've gone I, I wonky. Not a day. Now, I'm I'm spot on. I've figured out problems I, and everything. What? Can I tell you what to do? I have the same problem. Uh, I don't have the iWatch, but I have the iPhone, and it's always with me. Mm -hmm. And I program in an appointment, and it will uh, give me a reminder uh, 15 minutes before whatever I set it for that I have, you know, what I have to do. Yeah. So all my appointments are set up in that. Now, if you set them up in that, you'd see the appointment on your watch. Well, I set them up on my uh, on my uh, iPhone, but I don't tell them to ring me. You know, yeah. I, I've always well, felt I was very good. I mean, I could always keep my whole agenda in my mind, and apparently that's not good anymore. 
Uh, but I mean, all these other things I had to do yesterday. And then today I had to, I was been trying to solve a problem for days with my G Gabnet TV, which by the way, is a, another channel on the Roku, which you can go get. It's got a lot of videos in there. It's got some old shows and we're, we're putting stuff up down there. But I went in about a, about a, I don't know, a week ago and most of the things on it had disappeared. And I couldn't figure why. And what happens is you can refresh the thing on Roku in your developer's thing, and it tells you what it's not sending. And it said, uh, could not find this file, could not find this file, could not find that file. And they were all on my GoDaddy account. They could find all the files that were on my, my hosting account up in Canada, but not that one. So I got a hold of this guy at Instant TV. He tried to figure out what it was. He says it, it may be a glitch over at, uh, you know, over at... Uh, my hosting. I wrote my uh, wrote uh, to uh, uh, oh excuse me at Roku. I wrote Roku. They wrote me back and said, "Well, we see a few little problems here, but blah, blah, blah. we don't know what could be causing it." I finally figured it out because the one thing that had changed with my GoDaddy account since I last looked at Gabnet TV, which was a couple of months ago, was I added security, a security certificate, what they call an SSL. And what my, and I figured it out finally at the last moment today, what I had done was when I was saying, okay, such and such a file should play, I did HTTP colon forward slash forward slash uh, uh, yeah. when I should have gone HTTPS or right. HTTPS. Uh, See, I got to hand it and to so, you. So I added the S and sure enough, the fucker yeah. worked. What? I got to hand it to you. What? This is the kind of crap that I used to do eight hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> right? You add an SSL cert, and then you got to go back and remember that you got all of these addresses in there that you have to remember to go put that S in there. So you spend all this time troubleshooting it. And I used to get paid pretty well for it. I hate this crap. <laughs> and there's no way I would do it for free. Well, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here, here's what was strange. I have, you know, the GabNet channel. It's not the TV channel, but the GabNet channel. That one, all the things go through fine without the HTTPS. But with no, this I'll other thing that, that I have, which is a different uh, authoring protocol for the uh, for the uh, TV thing, uh, it it it, uh, it needs that that S. So I I, I I can't imagine doing that like you do, sitting in your house free. There's just no way. What I would else do I have to do? You've got a job. <laughs> Yeah, but if I didn't have a job, that would be the last thing I would you do. You know, a, 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 I have no interest in that crap. I, uh, Patrick I spends his day having to grab it. Uh, oh, look, it. he's carrying his bag. Look at that. He was carrying his bag. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, yes, I, I, I was looking at the back of my uh, UPS backup to see if the computer was actually plugged into it. Yeah. It is. And it is. Yeah. Oh, well, so much for your backup. Yes, Patrick. <laughs> but carrying your bag, so I, I never thought I would ask another guy this, but yeah. how's the cleaner doing? Uh, oh, um, it's, uh, it's clean and it's lubricated. <laughs> lubricated yeah you have to on the tip uh when you have it in uh you have to use some neosporin uh so that you don't get an infection okay well, well, really well, do, you do you take that thing out and put it back in no 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 oh, no. no just you uh, around it uh girlfriend uh it takes a, a swab uh an alcohol swab and she cleans around the catheter and then she applies uh, neosporin so that's that's sex between you two now it is, it, is for, it is for the next uh, several days. More, baby. More alcohol. Oh, yeah, baby. Baby, more alcohol. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, emptying, emptying out is another uh, uh, fun, uh, fun thing. Well, so, uh, yes, yeah, maybe Pat Patrick could give you some uh, hints. Yes, Patrick. One, one thing you don't want to do, Phil. Yeah. I don't know what, whatever type of uh, clasp you have on the bottom of the bag to empty, but yeah. make sure you watch that motherfucker so it doesn't get caught somewhere because I've had it every Smash. time I've had the kidney stone surgery. At one time or another, it's come undone, and I've had a floor full of piss. 
Oh. Now I've got to clean that up. And the thing is, for one of you guys cleaning it up, it wouldn't be bad. I mean, it's still a pain in the ass. It's tough, you know. But yeah, for me, not cool. But it wouldn't be for you either, Phil, with that in you. Because yeah. the balloon, you know that balloon's in you. Yes. And it feels weird. And if you bend over, it doesn't feel right. So, yeah, you just watch that, how, whatever class you have at the bottom. Yeah. You don't want that, and then it, yeah, just, no, I have I have a pretty secure clasp, and no, I'm no, careful no. about it. Uh, but uh, you know, this you know, is this is the reason I don't want to get my prostate removed is having to go through this surface for nine days. You know, the the worst part is uh, the cuts in your stomach and the things that they move around inside you to uh, to get to it. Uh, my, I'm so weak. I have to use a step ladder to gradually get off of the bed. Uh, each step, and then Faye, who's lucky if she's 100 pounds, has to pull me up because I don't have the abdominal strength. Abdominal. Uh, yeah, and, to sit and, up. And they did laparoscopy with you? Yeah. Well, what? it's uh, robotic. I don't know if it's laparoscopic. So it's not the little tiny, like the three little holes. No, they actually six holes. Six holes. Yeah, and uh, two of them were right in the front of my forehead. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, the old, they wanted to the get near. They, they wanted to get close. <laughs> they did that because they wanted to get close to your asshole. It's supposed well, to be over. Yeah, the pre to be over here. yeah, they they called it a prefrontal lobotomy, and they said that it was at no additional cost. Yes, it's yeah. free with every Kaiser patient. Yeah. So, what do you think of Trump? <laughs> well, I think um, I think that he banged that really hot model, <laughs> and I think that she's pissed. That she didn't get the deal that she wanted. So <laughs> no, now, no. see, no. The, the joke was, I was going to ask you how's Trump, and you were going to say, "Oh, that asshole." See, because you had the prefrontal lobotomy. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh boy, no, they, you, you would never be a good, good comedy partner. Well, you know, if if I had the prefrontal lobotomy, they, I'd probably be liking Trump even more. You know, well, I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a prefrontal lobotomy. Yeah, who know. said that? Somebody said that, and I'm trying to remember yeah. who. Uh, it was probably Dean Martin. No, it was, uh, what was his name? The, uh, the guy uh, 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 with the uh, gravelly voice, the singer. Starts Name starts with a W. Uh, uh, okay. Last name, W. Uh, 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 Edgar Winter? Yeah, no, he, <laughs> was, he was in Dracula with, with Francis Ford Coppola. And oh. uh, uh, I got, I, if I don't get the name, I'll, I'll go crazy here. Hold on a second. Uh, uh, Love at First Bite, I think, was George Hamilton. No, that's, yeah, that's George Hamilton, but... Uh, let me see here. Dracula. Dracula. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh, and uh, the uh, the actor's name is... Um, it, where, where? Come on. Tom Waits. That's who I'm thinking of. Tom Waits is the one who said, I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a prefrontal lobotomy. So, <laughs> I, I don't blame him. <laughs> that's a good one. Anyway, uh, so uh, so you're feeling, you're feeling okay today? I'm feeling I'm feeling better. You know, uh, sitting up last night was a challenge. I know you got you got tired. Yeah, and and what happens is it it puts the uh, the, the pressure yeah uh, on whatever was going on. Gee, uh, I didn't think it was that profound an operation. I just thought they maybe went in there with a suction or something, sucked the goddamn thing out. But I guess there's more to it than that. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I wrote the uh, I wrote the doctor, and I said, you know, my prostate is large. I heard that I was flailing around uh, with the airway and everything. Um, you know, how how are the nerves that control your uh, sexual uh, you, ability? You, can I still fuck my broad? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's basically the question. Yeah. And he says, uh, "We'll see." <laughs> he says. You know, you don't know. have, yeah, yeah. So, so you have, uh, you had a very large prostate to get it out, uh, could have caused some damage. Really? Oh yeah. So why didn't you take stuff to shrink it? Like finasteride does shrink it. I know you didn't like taking it, but I still take it all the time. Well, there was a couple of things. Um, one is, uh, I didn't like the side effects, but the other thing was, um, uh, a normal prostate is 30 milliliters, I think. Yeah, or milligrams, milli milligrams. Um, uh, it's it's amazing, largest... isn't it? Amazing how much uh, medical knowledge you gain from having something wrong with you. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. absolutely. 
but mine was 135. Wow. So uh, 135, if a normal one is 30, uh, it, no. it was so large that they, they couldn't even, uh, that procedure that Marjorie's friend had, the uh, seeds, uh, yeah. it has to be 60 less for the seeds. So that, And so it was too large for that. Uh, How yeah. did you get a prostate that large? You know, I'm Jewish. Uh, they, <laughs> they, they aimed a little higher. You know, if I was black, I, you know, maybe uh, <laughs> the prostate would be small. I mean, like my doctor, my, my doctor looked at mine and said, oh, yours, yours is a little large, but not, you know, I have, what I have is calcium deposits, which means it's just getting old. Sure. And, well, I talked to yeah. Jan Hutchins this morning mm -hmm. and, you know, told him that the operation went well and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And we had the same conversation. You know, he's black. And, uh, you know, I, I said, you know, uh, you know, my, my prostate was large and everything else was small. I said, if I was black, it'd be the other way around. <laughs> yeah. And then he hung up on you. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> He's a good friend. Yeah. So uh, today, the president uh, of, of the United States, um, what's his name again? Uh, mental case. Mental case. <laughs> president. <laughs> mental no, the mental case. case is the woman that's, that screwed him. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh. I would agree with you there. Yeah. Oh, she's got she's got a screw loose. I, I mean, you I know. watched the in, the interview because it was, and I, the whole time I just said, "You're a slut. You're a fucking." Well, tell slut. tell me and about I this because I didn't money. get to watch it. This was the interview with Anderson Cooper this yeah. evening. Yeah. yeah, I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. And then she's shocked. By the way, he's the same one who interviewed uh, Stormy Daniels, which is supposed to be on sixty minutes this Sunday. Yeah, yeah. and and the, when it came up that Stormy went to the same. Uh, she had a little. She had an affair with him and many other women at the same time as she was. Ha he was having the affair with her. Mm -hmm. She was shocked by that. She couldn't believe it. And I'm saying, wait a minute. This guy will fuck you. He's married. Yeah. You think he won't fuck around on you? What's brain she... in your head, really? Ah. Um, she said she was there at that function the whole time. Yeah. She was with him at everything except yeah. when he was golfing. Yeah. What was he doing? Fucking him in the golf cart? He was and playing 19 this, holes. Right. Stormy Daniels was it says that she got banged by Trump at the same right. Uh, event. Right. At his so, golf course. You know, I'm starting to think that maybe, you know, he's banged these girls, but they all have a screw loose. Of course and, they do. And this this one, the Playboy Bunny, she's definitely looking for her 15 minutes of fame. Absolutely. Exactly. That's all she's in it for. And she's pissed because uh, AMI promised her all those articles. Right. Two covers. Uh, two covers. They promised the this. They wanted to, they wanted to hide the story, which she says she really didn't want to tell this story. Right. That, uh, she was she happy was, that they hit. She was but, happy that they hit, but then they 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 owed her about one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of articles and covers and all they this. They gave her one hundred and fifty. No, no, they told her they. She said she collected about fifty five percent of that. Uh, she got maybe what eighty grand or something. Oh, they sorry. owed more. Okay, she was pissed. So, do you think he? She actually fucked him. Oh, oh yeah. Oh okay. So there, there's no, no, no. everything. She fucked told him good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And so what did what did she say about the encounter? Please let say, say it slowly. I've got my hands in the right place. Go ahead. <laughs> Do you want me to say it or you want to say it, Rob? She, she, she uh, it was not that kind of a salacious interview. It didn't go there. It, well, a little she, bit. She, she said, well, that's why she should have been on this show. Right. She, no, wait a minute. She said, and I'll, I'll address that in a second. She said that he was very, very nice to her. He was uh, that she loved him and it, she thought she thought he loved her and that he was kind and nothing like the person in the uh, in the tape, the uh, the um, the, uh, the um, tape on the bus. Uh, and uh, she said, what, Rob? She voted for him. She even said she voted for him. Uh, and uh, she uh, she said the only thing she regrets is that she made it with a married man. But she doesn't regret her relationship with him. Right. And, and she said uh, she would, would have married him in a heartbeat. And she thinks he loved her. Right. They're, they're now, wait a minute. Now, isn't this just a one-time encounter at a no, golf no, tournament? No, about nine months. Nine yeah. months? It went and, on and on. I see. Yeah. And he was, was, she was actually at Trump Tower. 
he took her on a tour of his apartment. Right. Now, uh, you know, the thing, uh, she says she, he took her on a tour of the apartment. But uh, the, the uh, other thing that that AMI promised was a show on GabNet, and she didn't get that either. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so. Now, who is this woman? What is her, what is, what does she, what does she do for a living? She was, she's not the playmate. Yes, yeah, she's the playmate. Oh, she's the and playmate. I'm, right. Yeah. Very beautiful woman. I mean, beautiful yeah. woman. Uh, I would say she's a 70% of Melania. You know, she even looked a little bit like her. Melania is prettier, but. I don't know about that. I don't think Melania is prettier. Melania, no, Melania's had a lot of work done. I don't know. It's too hard for me. Hmm? Yeah. Something about Melania that looks like hard. I'm not sure if I, that's the right word for it, but I think this woman is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Beautiful. Melania, no I kind of feel if I fucked Melania Trump, which of course is an impossibility because she would have nothing to do with me. I'm not rich enough. Um, I, I, think she, I, think, I think she wouldn't move a muscle while you were having sex with her. Because no. hey, she doesn't remember, move a muscle when she's interacting with people. Alex, Alex you own a network. You're yeah. right. Yeah. What yeah. else can you ask? <laughs> yeah, right. Too bad I don't have any employees to harass. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Patrick. Rob, that, that hardness about her, that's the strap on that she'd have if she'd ask fuck you. <laughs> that's what I, yeah maybe that's what it is she's she looks like uh, i don't know there's something about her that's so if, if, if she if she had that if she had that donald wouldn't stray yeah <laughs> oh know? donald would would have strayed anyway uh, you, uh, you know i i gotta tell you something and i'm saying this uh, to uh, any women who are listening out there because you should know this that i i know guys who've been married to some of the most beautiful women you've ever seen sexy amazing intelligent everything and they still fucked around sure you know and um my wife my one of my ex-wives i can't remember which one maybe it was ronnie i don't know maybe i'll have to ask her if i ever said this asked me uh why do i why do you cheat and i said darling you're everything to me you're everything i ever wanted at a woman you just want there's just one thing you're not and she said what i said somebody else you know, mm. the guys go after strange. It's also you conquest. Know. No, it's not conquest. I was never into conquest, but strange, you know. Strange is, yeah, but yeah. it's the acceptance that someone would let you uh, that to be that intimate with them. But guys are very, very uh, uh, s subject to, to wanting to get find some strange. Uh, now, you know, I mean, Marjorie's lucky to have gotten me at this point in my life because at this point in my life, I have no desire to stray, you know? Yeah. But I well, certainly, like if she say, uh, she wouldn't have liked me 20 years ago. It, like they say at our age, it's only good for peeing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good for jerking off, too. Uh, yeah. Maybe. yeah. But, <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, this is, I guess, the first woman to come out and actually tell her story. But what makes you say she's loony? Uh, uh, the, uh, any, everything other than the, the encounter uh, was um, someone uh, angry uh, that wasn't telling the truth. She was uh, definitely, uh, she had an agenda. I think she was after the money. You don't uh -huh. really know. That's the thing. She was very clear about the affair, She, the way she described it. She even said he didn't use condoms, so it was unprotected sex and all that. She was very clear about the relationship. When he got into asking about the deal, what's go the deal and, and why she's yeah, that fell apart. forward is where she fell apart, where, where you really couldn't, you know, couldn't what believe she really should have said was, I want to get paid. That's what she should have said. And because that's really, I think, the bottom line. She feels like, hey, this is a valuable story. And I, you know, I, I want to get paid. Was she and the it, one was she the one yeah. that was actually paid by the National Enquirer to sign a non disclosure? Yeah, AMI. AMI. Is that the, yeah. uh, uh, the company? Yeah. Company? yeah. Because she 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 tells it, at least in the stories I read prior to this interview tonight. Uh, she signed that because she thought it was just simply so she wouldn't tell the story and they had an exclusive on that story. That was the impression mm -hmm. she was given. She specifically said, I, w uh, I was glad that they could quashed it and they gave her what they gave her. But when she didn't get what they gave her, 
uh, or as much of it as she was promised, uh, now she's um, pissed. Uh, uh, pissed. Yeah. Well, because she's a Stormy Daniels wannabe in this case. I mean, Stormy Daniels has a real story to tell. Okay. Maybe. This is an opportunist. That's why, uh, uh, you know, why so should be with Daniels. a guy like Donald Trump in the first place? Yeah. You're an opportunist, right? You're trying to cash in. And so now she tried to cash in with Donald and, and, and that didn't work. So, OK, he went off. He was she would have married him. According to her, she was in love with him. But now she feels like there's money here and I want. Yeah. Uh, Patrick's got his hand millions. up. Patrick's yeah. got yeah. millions. Is this possible? I mean, the only name that any of us know is Stormy Daniel. Yeah. We don't know the name of this other gal or some of the other ones, but specifically, but specifically this Playboy uh, playmate, that there's some jealousy there that, you know, everybody knows Stormy, and Stormy is a, it's a household name. It's on the air, on all the network, and yet this gal, nobody hears about her except in the periphery, and this is the first time that she's, in the public, and she's saying, look, I got screwed financially. And you notice Stormy Daniels, even if she wasn't promised something from anybody, she's going to have a book. And you know, if there's a made-for-TV movie or some shit, it's going to be about Stormy Daniels. And Stormy is going to make off with money that this other one won't. There's going to so be a porno uh, with Stormy Daniels and a, uh, and a Trump lookalike. You know, well, you know I'll, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. Uh, uh, in fact, Forbin on our chat room said it very uh, nicely. He said, Stormy has managed her case very well, her lawyer, too. They brilliant, really brilliant. have. Yeah. And I think it's, it, it, it's her showmanship, <laughs> believe now, it or not. Well, the thing is that this, uh, the Playboy bunny had the same attorney. She wasn't a Stormy bunny. Daniels. She was a playmate. Playmate, bunny. No, there's a uh, difference, a big difference. Yeah, one waits tables and, and one hangs out at the no, pool. No, she was playmate no. of the year. No, she was playmate of the year. But these, yeah. and, these are the women. A playmate so, is hot. the woman who appears oh. in the uh, gatefold of play, uh, yeah. uh, Playboy. Well, By the way, uh, I'm using you, the right term because the play, Playboy never called it the centerfold. They called it the okay. gatefold. Take away my Playboy key and my ability to go into the Playboy club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but what uh, I'm saying is she was not a playmate. She was not a, yeah. uh, a, a buddy. A buddy. Uh, I understand. She didn't wait tables. But uh, the, uh, the thing was, she said that her attorney, uh, at the time that the AMI uh, article uh, was bought, mm -hmm. uh, or she bought, they bought the AMI article or, and her and they um, uh, gave her the deal. Mm -hmm. uh, her attorney was also representing uh, Stormy Daniels. Yeah. And uh, what's what goes on there? You know. Well, uh, I, uh, you know, uh, I, I I would imagine. Are these guys I, running after the story? No, are these I, guys no, uh, I, attorneys I, I, no, I, chasing I, ambulances? It could well be these are this is this is an attorney who is known within the adult film industry, and mm -hmm. they get recommended. By other adult film actresses or other women in the in the sex business uh, who need a good lawyer. This sure. guy, this guy, by the way, happens to be a terrific spokesman for her. I mean, yeah, he, I'm not sure because uh, one of the attorneys on the panel, the CNN panel afterwards, uh, uh, said that he knew this Keith. Uh, I forget his last name, and. Uh, uh, and he didn't seem to have any uh, aspersions on his uh, uh, his business, you know. No, he said he didn't have anything bad to say about him. Right, exactly. Well, no, the guy, I mean, I've seen him on many shows, and he is very, uh, very good at making his case and speaking on her behalf. And mm -hmm. um, it, with Stormy Daniels, it sounds strange for me to say this, but you've got kind of a class act going there. It's been handled. I don't no, think it, so. it's it, it, it. She doesn't look like a class act with those paste-on tits, you know. But but she but it, it, everything that she said, everything the lawyer has re represented her with, and so on, seems to have a certain taste to it, you know. If class acts, why would they be making this public? 
maybe making this public because uh, they, well, uh, the money. huh? Money. Certainly. Oh, money. Certainly. Money. Okay. It's money. Yeah. But and there's so, also another you know, reason, too. You don't know that politically she kind of finds uh, Trump repugnant. And, well, and the other one. Uh, well, the other one didn't. But uh, you, you could Stormy Daniels could well have an agenda as well. I'm sure she know. does. And yeah. that's to promote Stormy Daniels. Oh, right. But money. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. But, uh, I, yes, think yes. I think she's in, a, in the business. For many years, and not just Trump, and uh, she knows how to how to uh, manage money and manage people, and manage when people become problems, and maybe she's used an, this attorney or other attorneys to solve uh, these customer problems. Well, uh, customer McCall. problems. <laughs> I like that term, McConnell. Uh, the gal uh, tonight, uh, uh, I think she said, uh, now I, I, I forget, uh, uh, I'm, I'm getting to be like Alex. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. Well, um, she, there, there's a big difference between Stormy Daniels and, and, and Katie McDougal, and that is that uh, Katie McDougal supposed, uh, well, she believes Donald Trump loved her, and she loved him. And she was really kind of hoping that the marriage, she said when he took her around the, the apartment, she passed, they passed a room and he said, this is Melania's room. She comes here because she wants to be alone and read or whatever. And she went, hmm, I guess things aren't, you know, maybe all that great between them. She, the, I don't believe Stormy Daniels had any kind of, it was just, you know, a thing. Stormy but, Daniels, well, I think, was married. And I think yeah. that she was quite happy with her marriage. She, she's still married to the same guy after all these years. He would, he would, Donald Trump for nine months would fly her everywhere. Mm -hmm. She would book the, the, the airfare and he would give her the cash. So there would be no paper trail, paper trail. Um, and he would put her up and in fact, uh, Christmas time came and she got him a gift and he said, my gift to you is a New York apartment which never materialized, she broke up with him before. She never saw the apartment. But, uh, and then he asked, why, well, why did you break up? And she said it just after a while she couldn't deal with her guilt anymore. She, her mother told her, she told her mother she was friends with Donald Trump. And her mother said, don't, you know, I hope you're not being intimate with him. He's a married man. And she grappled with that for a long time. And eventually she, uh, she just said she couldn't deal with it anymore. Now she's, she's an evangel, she's an evangelist and all this. She's, uh, uh, all this bullshit. She said, I'm a different person now, blah, 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 blah. She, you know, I'm born I, again. Yeah. I, well, I, I like what I, Jimmy I, Carter said once to somebody who said, are you, have, have you, have you been born again? And Jimmy Carter said, I, no, I got it right the first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that he broke up over uh, decorating differences. Yeah. She did mention the gold. He yeah. said, what was his apartment like? She goes, gold. <laughs> Not a gold. Yeah. Yeah. His, he said, no, his, really his, beautiful his, views. Yeah. But his taste in decoration is uh, yeah. a little bit much. The only person I think that was I'm worse. The, Kremlin. the only person I've oh. ever, ever encountered who had worse taste in decorating is uh, Larry Flint. Yeah. <laughs> um, his office and his area in the office. He sends some woman to Europe uh, to buy all the all all, all these uh, th all the furniture for his his floor in the Hustler building. And I don't know what was wrong with this woman, but uh, you know she had to be high or something when she bought this shit because you go up there and I walked in. I was Bruce David, who's now gone, uh, uh, took me in to see his office and see the, that floor. And I was just astonished by, by how bad the furniture looked, you know, how nothing fit with anything else. So the only person worse than Donald Trump at decorating has got to be Larry Flint. Have you been to Versailles for the palace? Years ago, I think I was there. I don't know. I may have been stoned. What, uh, what did you think of the furniture there? I, I always thought that that was very similar to what Trump like you know the Louis the Fifteenth. I don't know if I had if I was stoned at the time. I just wanted to know where the hot dog cart was. <laughs> yes, Sir Patrick. Uh, 
No, it is very similar, but you know what? That was also 200 years ago. Yeah. And taste and time <clears throat> changed, and maybe um, Trump could have thought of himself as not the fucking king. Well, you know, uh, I, I, was, I was in a house uh, last week that we did a hardwood floor for, and I looked at this guy's desk in his office, and I said, that's Louis the Fifteenth, isn't it? And he says, yes. He says, it's like 200 years old, and uh, it was the most gorgeous desk. You know, it's not necessarily my taste, but you can appreciate it from, from an arts point of view. Right, uh, but one piece or two pieces, not a whole fucking... Hmm apartment or a house or whatever well, also, you know? also imagine like with with uh, with uh, flint what i saw yeah. was louis the 14th but i also saw 15th 16th 17th mixed <laughs> with with uh with uh, napoleonic when you with, got that with, with with uh french whorehouse mixed with you know and nothing matched you know did you have an elvis uh, uh that glowed in the dark you know Elvis. If there was you, another if, guy with no taste. Yeah, have you ever been to? Have you ever been <laughs> I to have. Graceland? No, I uh, what are we talking about? The Jungle Room? Yeah. Oh, oh, just the whole place really is just nasty. Yeah, yeah. He deserved to die just for bad decorating. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pink Cadillacs and all kinds of gaudy uh, crap. I mean, man. But, I mean, it was a great tour. I love visiting Graceland. I, I'm not an Elvis fan, but you just look around and you go. <clears throat> But if you were in Memphis, if you were in Memphis, did you do the Sun Records tour? I did. That yes. was, uh, that, that was that amazing. Was, that, we, both I and Shecky said, because we were we went went there together, that that was better yes. than, the, than the Graceland tour. It's just shorter. It's shorter, it's shorter. but it's shorter. It's, the history behind the, it's so historic. When you hear that music playing and you're standing on the floor of, of Sun Records and, and you hear the songs... And they and you think, my God, they were recorded in these walls. Yeah, uh, you get goosebumps. Yeah. It was it was wild. And they I still they still Nash they still use it as a recording studio too. Oh, yeah. yeah. In Nashville, I went on the uh, the Johnny Cash uh, museum. But that's tour. not Memphis. Nash no, I was Nashville I was a, is the I was, tasteless. I, know, but I, the tasteless, I didn't go to Memphis. Memphis is full of of character and taste and uh, really? great food, and Nashville is just a bunch of hillbillies making getting rich. Yeah, <laughs> you know. yeah, they are. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I hadn't been to Memphis. But in, in Nashville, they had the Johnny Cash Museum. Uh, that was pretty interesting. Ah, but uh, you know what else they had in Memphis? No one. Uh, was not to be missed. The St. Jude Hospital. And, oh, and, and Tom, and, uh, what, what's his and, name? And they, Danny and, Thomas? And, yes, they have a whole, uh, uh, what do you call it? A whole display, a whole area of the hospital as the Danny Thomas Museum. And yeah. he's buried there, too. There's the Danny Thomas Memorial. It's where he's buried. Uh, and uh, um, I don't know if you know the legends and stories about Danny Thomas, but there was always this rumor running around that Danny Thomas loved to uh, hire hookers to shit on a glass table while he laid under it. That's more sanitary. You've heard this, haven't you? Uh, Patrick's nodding yes. You've heard that that urban myth, let's say. I had heard that somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the name of that is Capra. Caprophilia. Yeah, Caprophilia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I what? can't for the life. I mean, I can think of just about every other fetish, including golden showers. Yeah. And I cannot wrap my head around that. I, I can't wrap my head around that either. And you know, the, the thing was that Shecky then, at one point I yelled to Shecky while we were in the Danny Thomas Museum, uh, Shecky, where's the glass coffee table? <laughs> and I got to tell you a story. I got to tell you a story, though. I had a friend. She was a, a comedian. I'm trying to remember her name now. Her father was, uh, 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 was uh, uh, one of the... Uh, what was it? God, my, my mind is just going. Anyway, she was a comedian, and she was hired by Danny Thomas to work on his last TV show. Uh, oh, yeah, he was one of the Disney cartoonists, her father. He was one of the ones that ran the strike. Um, he, he, In fact, in Fantasia, he created the mushroom sequence. And I'm trying to remember her name right now offhand. 
And she told me she was working for Danny Thomas. And when she was interviewed by Thomas, she walks into the, his office and she sits down and right in front of her is a glass coffee table. And of course, she knew the stories, but she didn't, she, she didn't blink an eyelash. She said, I didn't even, I pretended like it wasn't even there. Was it tempered glass? Uh, it must have been. <laughs> I wouldn't have eaten anything off of it. No, no, no. Yeah. But, um, um, but I, I heard was, that when he had that fetish, he had to be dressed like Uncle Tanus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one thing that came out of that show, and the, the truth is it was called Make Room for Daddy. And if you've ever had a little dog. Make doo-doo for doo -doo. Daddy. No, no. And, and, and two people in a bed, the dog takes up all the room in the bed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I always say to the, my little dog, you know, make room for daddy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, I'm trying I, to I'm think trying of to, Danny Thomas show. I'm trying to look up his. That show, his that show launched Andy Griffith. Mm -hmm. It was the, it was, they, they did the pilot on the uh, Danny Thomas show. My name, Jose Jimenez. That yeah. might have been another one that was launched from there. He launched. Uh, bunch of shows from i don't know if jose jimenez got a show or just guest spots on things oh, like uh you know he had a show that oh, he had a show. as that character wow yeah uh let me see here i'm, I'm trying to look up the guy he was name. jewish <laughs> oh, Spanish. i think you're right yeah mm -hmm. i don't think you... I remember. yeah uh, he was jewish my name jose jimenez remember? yeah yeah can you imagine him doing that today <laughs> People wouldn't laugh at it. They would just, you know, right. it's yeah. just different today. Well, they claim it was, you know, racism wow. and uh, her, you know, her, her name was her name was is Karen Babbitt. Her father was Art Babbitt, and Art Babbitt, Art Babbitt, uh, Art Babbitt, oh, for, for, Babbitt. in Snow White, he was in charge of drawing and animating the Queen. Wasn't that Rain Man's brother? Charlie. Charlie, and Charlie. then, and then in Fantasia, oh. he did the mushroom sequence. And then yeah. when Disney had the big strike, Babbitt was the guy leading the strike. So, of course, he was fired from Disney. Mm. Uh, and he went over, I think he was with uh, UPA, UPA, I think, was the uh, company that did a new kind of animation. But anyway, she's the one that told me that story. Now, whether it's true or not, I don't know. And she doesn't know either. All she knows is she sat in his office and there was a glass coffee table. So, yeah, yeah that, that, can, that should convict them. Yeah. Make doo doo for daddy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, cool. Well, yeah. Um, he was one of the people who remade the jazz singer. Can you name three people who did the jazz singer? Yeah. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Al Jolson. Al Jolson. Mm -hmm. yeah. then That's there, the only one. I then Danny Thomas did it. Who was the third guy to do it? Neil this Diamond. One. You're right. Very wow. good, Rob. I didn't think anybody would get it. Yes. Neil yeah, Diamond. I Made a, made a version of the jazz singer. Yeah. Right. Or Lawrence <laughs> B.A. was in it. Mm -hmm. it's Neil like wrote, Neil I, wrote I'm a Believer for the Monkees. Yes. That's right. Oh, of course. Everybody knows that. Right. Well, wasn't that where he was, uh, his father was a rabbi or something yes. like that? A cantor. Yeah. Assistant yeah. cantor. Yeah. And it was in a, uh, it was this old synagogue that's way on the Lower East Side. Which version are you talking about? You're talking about uh, Neil Diamond's version? Neil Diamond's. Yeah. It, it, or, uh, Eld, Eldridge or Eldridge Street? It's Eldridge Street. Yeah. That's right. Oh, you got it. That's great. My my uncle was a jeweler and, uh, right on that street. So There's a movie I want to lay my hands on because I was watching a documentary of Roy Orbison. Uh, it was done by the BBC. And one of the things was they showed clips from the only Hollywood movie that he ever starred in. They decided they wanted to make him a star. Now, believe me, Roy Orbison did not have movie star good looks. All right. And yeah. sunglasses or the acting ability. OK, so they showed scenes from this movie and it looks like it's maybe the worst movie ever made called The Fastest Guitar in the West. And he's got a guitar when he pushes a button a rifle comes out of it. Nice. Huh? Is nice. that, is that, is, I got to see that movie. I've never seen it. I got to find a copy of it somewhere. 
it is now my new it's now my new um, uh, uh, quest, as it were. I watched some western a long time ago where a guy was carrying a guitar case, and then pushed a button on the case and it fired. Oh, oh, oh uh, get smart. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> no, no. I think what you're thinking about is Desperado. Yeah, maybe it was a western. Antonio Banderas. Uh, okay. Yeah, probably. Yes. Yes. He he had a yeah he had a gun in the guitar case, but yeah, that 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 case. that makes more sense than a guitar that With when he, when he pushed the button the, the rifle the stem not what whatever you call it, the barrel of the rifle I, comes well, out barrel, of the, comes barrel. out of the guitar to shoot people. Why well, I guess he does it while singing a song. Yeah, I hope it was in tune. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's get on to a few other things here. Today, the stock market took another deep plunge. Uh, mm -hmm. so, did, so did my personal wealth. Uh, you know, uh, uh, yes, Jeff. My wife, about a month or maybe even six weeks before, said Trump is absolutely crazy and the market is going to dive and she took all of her uh a lot of stuff right out of the market wow said, the hell with it. and then you know so, it keeps going up and down and up and down and then when today uh, i think she's validated her thoughts well the reason it's gone down is and is trump iron. is trump yeah. and yeah. and and trump is causing this Lack of confidence in the stock market. Can I ask you a question, Alex? Sure. Do you want intellectual properties uh, protected from the Chinese? Do, do you do you want them to continue to steal our technology and uh, and and get away with it? And what these tariffs do is they punish the Chinese for their lack of enforcement of intellectual but all, all, but, but Phil, all the Chinese have to do is raise their prices and say, fuck you, here's your money. Yes, but at one point their prices are too are high and ours, it, and it's it, people are already starting to have a backlash. They come into my store, they say, I don't want any Chinese wood floors. Uh, and, you know, I mean, well, they're, they're adamant about it. How and good is the Chinese, they, how, how good are the Chinese wood products? Well, everything is Chinese wood products. You know, today. There, are, there are some of them that they use spit to hold them together. I don't buy those. You know, I buy some good ones. I, I buy ones where they have people in the factories that make sure that they know what they're doing and okay. that watch the shipment. But here, here's the thing. Uh, you know, I, yes, I think intellectual property needs to be protected. But, you know, that never stopped us from stealing from people either. You know, well, what's happened, yeah. what's happened over the years is that certain countries, uh, I'll, I'll use Japan as, as the perfect example, sure. have taken some idea we invented or we developed and then the they did percent. it. No. And then they did it better. I'll give you a good example. Uh, the videotape recorder. Uh, we never were able to develop a home videotape recorder. But the Japanese came out with a helical scan recorder and found a way to make them more compact and cheaper and thick, thinner tape and so on. And so, therefore, we got uh, 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 they were able to take a technology that basically existed and improve upon it. They studied our mm -hmm. market. They used to come over in the 70s. I remember at the trade shows, uh, I, was, I used to work some furniture trade shows. And they would come over in, in groups with cameras, and they took pictures of everything. And they also studied our lifestyle. They studied what it was that we liked and didn't like so that they knew what kind of products they could manufacture. Well, that, 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 that's, a, that's just wise marketing. You know? oh, I understand. But, they, uh, but uh, they have laws, and they respect those laws. We have laws of, about intellectual property, and if some people violate it, there's supposed to be a system to to deal with them. But the Chinese don't enforce anything when it comes to stealing our intellectual property and uh, using uh, cyber uh, attacks on us. Uh, so what Trump did is, a, I believe, a preemptive a, attack uh, to to stop uh, these things and get our 
a trade yeah, deficit. What, what, he, what, he, what, he's, what he's initiated is a trade <laughs> war, and that's something you don't want to have. And well, that's and no, wait a trade minute, war. and that's what the stock market was fearful of today. It would have gone down a lot more than that if there was a war. They went down ten percent. What 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 is happening now? Ten percent is ten percent is, is, is a position. lot, Phil. Ten percent. You said only ten percent. Ten percent's a lot. It's one of the biggest drops in in history. Although, uh, and who's it, ha- it? And 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 what is it being blamed on? It's being blamed on Trump. Yeah. But Trump, in in his wisdom. Is is taking a preemptive shot and putting himself in a bargaining position to get China to they, uh, they, 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 to you know something they got the rest of the world to do business with they don't give a shit about us we owe China China and we have the largest and, deficit yeah, with yeah. China and if they uh, ever want to call in that chip we're in trouble well maybe we'll make some of it back on the uh, on the uh, tariff well maybe we won't maybe they'll just ask for their money back and we, we got to cough it up. Then he'll send them a check, but you know. Oh uh, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna send a check for thirteen trillion dollars. I hope it doesn't bounce. <laughs> it, it will, believe me, believe yeah. me. All I'm saying <laughs> yeah. is there were better ways of handling this situation than what he's done. Yes, Jeff. I don't. I don't think we're gonna go to Pittsburgh and open up a whole bunch of old steel mills no. no, because can... they don't exist. I think we'll make new ones. No, I think we'll no, make, uh, no, no, no. Oh, yes, we'll do robot if we do well, build be some if, of that. But, we, but we'll build you, robotic, but it's not going to give more Americans jobs. Uh, there are other ways they, besides they, just they, throwing they, coal they, in a vat. They got steel mills that used to be run by hundreds of people, thousands of people, now, now being run by tens of people. Right, but when the steel is manufactured here and sold here, mm-hmm. you have you have ancillary jobs behind all okay. of this industry. Okay, and we and how much can we produce to take care of the needs of of American industry? Certainly not a hundred percent. Some of we that's can, going to have to come from China. It's going to have to come from other countries. And if we put tariffs on them, all they're going to do is charge the tariff price back to the uh, to the car companies and so on. And where's that going to come out of your pocket, Phil? I, most of our steel came from Canada, and yeah. uh, and uh, and we don't have any tariffs on Canada. Well, you know why? You know why? NAFTA. NAFTA. We can't do it. Right, but that'll be next. No, and well, it won't I, be I next. I heard today to- that Argentina and a bunch of other countries are uh, they don't have to pay this tax. Uh, do they right. make anything? <laughs> they must produce something. I don't know, Argentina, I thought it was cattle. Well, it's true, but they do a lot of other things, a lot of the, uh, they, they, Believe me, there's a lot of industry down there that, other than, right. than cattle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know Brazil is, is probably the largest producer of manufacturers of cars and things yeah, like yeah, that. I, I was thinking cars. In South America. They, uh, no, Mexico made the VW Beetle. Uh, maybe Brazil also. Uh, I think they've just stopped production of that. No, the VW Beetle, yeah. Yeah. They finally and it? No more? No more. No, no more. That's... Yeah. Huh. I don't think... The, the trouble was the new Beetle, the most recent incarnation of the Beetle, just didn't have what the old one had. The old no, one had... The old one was iconic. It was iconic. It was a simple car. I remember there was a book out that said... Uh, how to fix your Volkswagen, and yep. you could fix some things using a bobby pin. I mean, they I were that simple. I remember you had a square back. A, a uh, square back? Uh, oh, yeah, one, I, I had yeah. a, uh, yeah, one of those uh, VW, uh, I can't remember what they called the model. I think it was a square back. It, it, it was like back. a little mini station wagon. Yeah, yeah, I had that, I had, and then I brought it to New uh, No, I bought it here in New York. No, yeah, but you brought it to San Francisco. No, but I don't think I brought it to San Francisco. Uh, I used to, I remember where your parking space was. No, when I, yeah, but when I came out to California, I bought a whole new car, you know. You did, but shortly after. Yeah. Uh, No, I didn't bring that car with me. I did not. Oh, jeez. Yeah, anyway, Patrick. Maybe you said my car was like that. Patrick? I I think the newest incarnation of the Beetle what was it, about 20 years ago that they brought it back? For yeah. Like the yep, in the 90s. Anniversary or whatever it was. Um, I think it was great 
before that, I think it should have been a limited run of maybe two years just to sell, you know, do that. It's just like the uh, Camaro. Um, mm. I've always been a fan of the Camaro, especially the 67, 8, and 9. Yeah. And that's what Chevrolet has done now. But it's been that way for the last 10 years. Yeah. And, you know. So his Mustang. So his Chrysler with the right. Ch Challenger. It, yeah. It, and the Barracuda. It's overdone. And it's not special. They're oh, you know? they, they're beautiful. They're, they're works of art compared to what we have today. Well, yeah. And that's just it. I think when they bring them back for an anniversary, it makes them special. You know, if it's the 50th anniversary or something like that. But. You know, the Camaro had been in production now, just that body style, just like the 60, for, what, almost 10 years. And I it's want not them, special anymore. I want them to bring back the 1959 oh. Cadillac Eldorado convertible. <laughs> that, well, you know, I'll with the fins. They should hmm? bring the Gremlin back. Yeah, that was yeah. yeah. That that. Do you remember? Do you remember before? Hey, we, you know, I, it's funny how we how safe we make cars now that we have you know airbags in the front, the back, the sides. You know, you can't do this on this. But I remember specifically uh, an old either Pontiac or Oldsmobile that a friend had. Uh, and these things were like Sherman tanks when you drove them. I mean, you know, uh, it, it, what was it? I think Jay Leno said once, if you, if you, you know, just if you hit something, uh, it, there's not a dent to the car, just hose off the blood and keep going, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, and they had in, in, I remember this implicitly, in the middle of the steering mm -hmm. wheel as, a, uh, as part of the decoration. Oh, it was the red? No, it was a red thing that came up, and it yeah. was pointed. It was like right. this giant... Like a spear. Spearhead oh, on, 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 the, on the center of the... So that if you had an accident, <laughs> your head would just simply be impaled on this steering the wheel. The steering wheels did not collapse in those years either. Oh, or the steering columns were not right. collapsing. Or at least if your head didn't hit it, but you bumped into something and the, the car and it came forward, you know, the steering wheel, it could stab you and kill you. Oh, I yeah. would tell you. I mean, the it was the, these, metal. <laughs> it, I'm surprised as many people survived those cars as they did. And they didn't have seat belts. Yeah. Uh, right. yeah. Do you Wasn't remember? Do you remember I'll, I'll, I'll go to Patrick's next, but did, did, do you remember this? A thing called a bumper. Yeah. That yeah, was a sure. big metal thing that was meant to keep you from being smashed. Yeah. Now, what have you got? It's a plastic kind of thingy they got down there that always breaks when you have an accident, right? Right. Yeah. Well, it's the crumple zone. It's the crumple zone. Yes, so yeah. Patrick, you had your hand up, and then Jeff had his hand up. Yeah, I, I know I brought this up several weeks ago, but just that spear is the same as my suicide knob. I mean, God, God help me if I get into an accident, uh, you know, it, that, that thing could crush me. So. <laughs> and, you got a heart. Yes, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I can, I can remember being a kid and my dad had an old Nash. Oh God. <laughs> Anybody even knows what a Nash is. Uh, wait a minute. Nash uh, it, it, yeah. 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 Okay. Tramp. Yeah. Well, yeah. uh, it, it, and, oh, and you know, here we are, and uh, we're driving around, and 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 I'm in the front seat. You know, my mother is in the back with my sister. There was no seat belts. There was no anything. No, there was nothing uh, like that. You know, you know there was none of that. Yeah. And, and, and now, if my wife says like, if I don't put put my seat belt on in ten seconds, she figures that I'm dead. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, the thing is, I've never been a big guy for seatbelts because I grew up not having to use them. Yeah. You know, and and uh, and I, I want to make my driving just a little more thrilling anyway. You know, you know uh, in the police cars before the law was that you had to wear the seatbelts, cops rarely wore them because you it made it, it, it difficult to get your gun out if you had to. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they changed the law. Uh, it was it was tough to to go over to starting to put on a seatbelt. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Oh. it's uh, it's habit. Look who's joining us. Ray Renati is out there. Hello, Ray. Hey, 
Hey, how you doing? Good. Hey. All right. We're talking cars. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're talking seat belts. And we're talking seat. Oh. And we're talking seat belts. So, oh yes, yeah, seat belts. Do you, you know I had a friend from Colorado out, and uh, I don't think a lot of people in Colorado actually wear their seat belts. I, I had to keep telling her to put her seat belt on, and she hated it. Did is uh, do they have a law? I think they fifty states have laws about seat belts now. Yeah. Now I remember, but I think they don't do it. Like they don't wear, they don't have a motorcycle helmet law, and they like not to wear their seat belts. It's kind of it's yeah. the Colorado you, sort you of thing. You mentioned the Nash. <laughs> Everybody must remember the Studebaker. Oh yeah, yeah. The car that at one point looked like it was it, it, it looked the same coming at you as it was backing up. Right. It looked exactly <laughs> the same on both ends of the car, except the Avanti. The Avanti is still a work of art. You, you think know, that was a work of art? Yeah. Really? I was just talking about an Avanti today because a friend of mine had one. Yeah. And, you know, it was originally a uh, supercharged Studebaker. Yeah, but it was a Studebaker car. Oh, the Avanti 2 is what And then saying. they re. Yeah. They rebuilt built it. Right? In Iowa. Right. And, right. and then somehow they moved it to uh, have General Chevy. Motors engines, Chevy engines, yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. But it is. Uh, if I'm if I'm correct, it was uh, Jamie or something Lowy who was the uh, yeah, Edmund Lowy, Ed, Edmund or, Lowy? Uh, Raymond Lowy, Raymond Lowy, Lowy. Raymond Lowy, yeah. yeah, designer. Yeah, he you know what he also he also designed things like the the like pens and things like that. He was very very, yeah. very good yeah. at, at design. Uh, industrial yeah. designer. Yeah. There was a um, uh, a lighting company called Koch and Lowy, and I believe that was uh, his his company. They make some beautiful they made some beautiful lamps. Yeah. Uh, Coction, yeah. but all I'm saying is it's amazing what we today with <clears throat> cars how 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 really safe they are by comparison. Oh yeah, you know well, we've uh, learned a lot from all the crash tests and you know they've really applied science to the car rather than. But I want I will, thought, I will like brick shit houses and yeah, they you know yeah. you'll be safe. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but you know what you know what was kind of interesting. The we were, this goes back to the original Volkswagen Bug Beetle. Uh, <laughs> those things were really probably one of the safest cars on the road. You could mm. roll those things and the roof would never cave in. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think the Mexican Beetle and the Brazilian Beetle was it was built on the same body style as the original Beetle. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, uh, and uh, that that's right. Beetle that's in America is the one with the little flower and uh, the front engine. And uh, well, once in a well, while they bring yeah. back the Mexican one. You know, once every ten years or so they'll they'll yeah. let a they'll let a number of them loose here in the U.S. and people can get some new the new ones of the old style. Yeah. But well, I, you know what? You know what I find really interesting is <clears throat> is to look at old photos, especially down like uh, in San Francisco by by the Cliff House and. I was just looking at some pictures from the 40s, and there's all these old cars. And then yeah. you see Beatles, and they look exactly the same as they do now. And it, it looks like it's some it, kind it, of time, it, time warp. It, there, there was a period of time where they stopped making the Beatles. At least they weren't available in the United States. But I think right. they kept making them all along elsewhere in the world. Am I right yes. about that? Yes. Oh, yes. From what forty nine? Yeah, well, I mean, they stopped. I guess I don't know when they stopped making. I know it was the late seventies because I remember. Might have been early eighties. The, bug, the bug. Or seventies through the early eighties, and then they started importing them again from Mexico for a while. So and then they, they stopped. Were, again. So they were still making them somewhere else yeah. in the world. Yeah, they were making all sorts of other Volkswagens for the American market. Well, you yeah. know what I had? I uh, maybe this, uh, no, I don't think this is what you remember, Phil. I had a Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. I don't uh, remember. Which was a Volkswagen, but yeah, a Ghia yeah. designed yeah, the body, design. and it looked like a sports car. They're uh, beautiful. They, they were beautiful. Yeah, they absolutely mm -hmm. were. But they didn't have any more power than a Be it Volkswagen same Beetle had. Me, it was the same. But now, wait a minute. All, you know what the Beetles all had in common, and the Carmen Ghia, and, and, and so on? Air-cooled. And air -cooled. Yeah, but who made the engine? Uh, Porsche. Porsche. They were all yeah. Porsche engines. Yeah, they weren't the powerful Porsche engines, but they were Porsche engines. Yeah. I owned a '64. Was my first car. Really? I had my down for my dad. He bought it new in '64. My Carmen <laughs> Ghia had a certain special thrill about it. I bought it secondhand, and um, 
it, it the, the the reverse gear didn't work very well. You had to kind of hold it in in order to maybe. And it got <laughs> even worse and worse. And if I got on a hillside, I parked on a hill once. You know where you you don't you're not with the hill. You are kind of parked into the hill, right? Yeah. And I couldn't get out. That thing wouldn't go in reverse well enough Shit. to get me out of that space on that hill. I had to have somebody, people passing by, push me Here, out of the up. road. <laughs> this, is, this is a stretch, but do you possibly remember I had an orange Volkswagen bus? Yeah. Uh, Sausalito? Alex, well, I don't remember it, but and uh, somebody I don't, rem I don't remember you either. So you know that's uh, rear-ended me, and you loaned me Susan's Camaro. What? Well, uh, Did she have a Camaro? <laughs> she had a yellow Camaro, like a uh, seventy something. It was you know not. Were uh, we still married? Maybe. Were we still living together? Uh, just on the end of it. Well, I mean. Yeah, you were you were still together, but uh, and so was, so she I'm had the Camaro, and I had I think I can't remember what I was driving Mazda, Mazda, Mazda yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, and she had this yellow Camaro uh, with uh, uh, this seat cover that uh, was was like a, a leopard or something, yeah, <laughs> because the seats were all messed up. <laughs> oh, okay, well, yeah, but today you restore those Camaros and yeah. you can fetch a hey, pretty. Hey, thankful penny. you loaned it to me, huh? I was thankful you loaned it to me. Uh, yeah, right. I had a car similar to that Carmen Gee. I was a eight, uh, Fiat 850 Spider. Ooh. Piece oh, you... of crap. Well, yeah. of course, oh, you God. know what Fiat stands for in Europe. Fix it again, Tony. That's right. Fix it again. In fact, I, I as, as you drive, as you drive all it, over Italy, about every every mile, there's a sign saying Fiat uh, repair shop here. <laughs> yeah. This is like about every five miles you would see uh, an arrow, Fiat repair shop. Yeah. Well, there was a reason they stopped selling them in this country until they bought Chrysler, and then they had another outlet to, to move their steel. Yeah. You know? But, but uh, I'll tell you something, though. Uh, when, you went to, when you went to Spain, in Spain, companies yeah. could had not – comp Yeah, companies could not uh, – uh, uh, be a hundred percent owner of their company. So if you brought in, uh, oh, I don't know, Goodyear tires, let's just say it would be Goodyear tires of España, and then it would be a half ownership by a Spanish owner, right. half ownership by by Goodrich or Firestone right. or whatever. And in in Spain, the Fiat, because it had to have a different name because it couldn't be a Fiat, was called a Seat. It was the same yeah. exact car, just S E A T, plumped on the front of it. And Once in a while in France, I still see those. And those Seahawks. and those were shitty cars too. <laughs> I bought a truck that was called an uh, Iveco, and when I was uh, still installing carpet, this Iveco was uh, made by Fiat, uh, Daimler, and uh, uh, what's the other Italian uh, company? Um, starts with an A. That's a uh, nice. Uh, no. Uh, uh, well, anyway. Uh, uh, anyway. Or uh, Alfa Romeo. No, yeah, because I uh, because I remember uh, uh, Alfa Romeo. Yeah, that's a nice. It was very big. Uh, you say that's yeah. a nicer car. Yeah, this it was, was an a Italian beautiful car. car. <laughs> but if you needed I'll, a set I'll of keep brakes working for... on that joke till I get it right. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> needed brake brake pads. They had to get them from Italy. Okay, you know? I'm going to throw one at you that uh, uh, I I know you probably know, but the Citroen Du Chavot. Oh, oh du my God. The two-cylinder car, right? Yeah, yeah. with the uh, cloth roof. It was it makes uh, the gas and the oil. Is that the one that would go up and down like that? No, no, though that was a, that was the that was the full uh, the Citroen. Citroen. Yeah. That was, but this was the Citroen Du Chavot. It had two uh, cylinders. It got something like seven thousand miles to a gallon, <laughs> and yeah. and it only went fifteen uh, miles. An hour. No, I tell you, a great like place a, to have it was when I was in the early days when I was in Ibiza. People liked the Du Chavot because it, you didn't need to get too much gasoline for it. It right. you know you didn't have to go too fast on that island, and it, they never ran out. You know, they were another simple car like the Volkswagen. Uh, I rented one in the south of France once about 30 years ago. Yeah. They looked like a frog. <laughs> a Duchamp. Yeah. It was a pretty good yeah. little car, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah they're kind of like weird looking Volkswagen Beetles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, 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 and like the, the windows, the door, the windows didn't open. No. Yeah. 
you know, at all. Maybe they you had to slide them or something. Yeah. They were really basic cars. They were, they were when I was in high school. Way at the bottom. I, in high school, I had a 1960 MGA, and the windows had uh, you took them off. Uh, they they were they were curtains. And uh, you took them back <laughs> in the trunk, and if it started raining, you had to run out to the trunk and put the windows back put on. Them, put them, <laughs> reassemble. I it. got yeah. a a Triumph. It was a sports car. It was a small little sports car they made. It was Spit a cheap fire, one. Sp- Sprite, Sprite, a Triumph Sprite. Oh, those are oh, cute. yeah. Well, I I took it back to the dealer after I went to school one day when it was raining and it was kind of flooding. And the entire car got filled with water because they you're, didn't you're do it. You're a little it. tall for one of those, huh? You're you're a little tall for one of those sprites. Well, I I was I, I had a sprite and I liked it. My little sports car, and all of a sudden one day it just rained a little, and all I'm up to my knees in water on the inside of the sprite. I took it back. I my, said, my best friend in high school had one of those, Alex, and that thing he had nothing but trouble with that thing. Well, it was constantly breaking down. English cars are nothing but trouble. Yeah. Yeah. You remember the old MGs? Those were that's what the, I had. The, the, yeah, that's what I. Had. The, the, you said MGA, but they were called MGs. Yeah, he was 1958 to 62. Yeah, and T and TF was before that. Are you talking but, about the ones like yeah. in Love Story? Yeah, but those are tiny little jetabouts. You know, they yeah, were great. Six plus power. That, that was that was when I was in high school. That was the car we all coveted. You know? Oh yeah, we felt that was a chick magnet. It was. It was Boy, a gorgeous car. Well, Mine, which one? Which the, car? T D T F T C. Did any who, who, who car you uh, did MG. any car any oh. of you ever MGs bought from did, the any, did any car you 16. ever bought get you laid? <laughs> no. Well, my, but but my that's why you had, bought it. At an MG. Huh? And uh I used to repair it for her. And uh she didn't have any money at, at the time and and she bought this MG. Be. used and it was kind of a crappy one anyway and uh you know it looked the paint looked really good and i think they had just repainted it recently yeah and, you know it was just a junky car but it's anyway so- i i had to get on on work on it and i forget what the heck was going on and i get underneath it and i'm trying to move uh the rear axle it wasn't working properly and I start kind of pulling on it and all of a sudden while I'm pulling it starts moving oh shit oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and the car ran off the, the the lift the lift and it runs down on top of me wow oh my god <laughs> oh yeah and here I am underneath and I can breathe but not very well. Wow. You know, small one. So I called my wife at the time, and she's my girlfriend at the time. I said, all right, listen. I said, here's what you got to do. Just Fired do him. exactly what I tell you. I says, go in the back. There's a jack in there. <laughs> Bring the jack on the left-hand side. Stick it in there and crank up on that thing. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Said call uh, the fire department, you know. <laughs> it wouldn't have been too long. I'm telling you, I had to fix it myself. Oh, man, what a crappy car. <laughs> Boy, you know, this show has been everywhere tonight. That's, That's what funny. I like about a good ramble is that you start, uh, where do we start tonight? I don't know. Hookers and cars. Huh? Hookers and cars. Hooker, well, hookers, cars, oh, my. Yeah. Wow. It's <laughs> been fun. Been a lot of fun. Rob, thank you so much. Uh, Phil, you look great in your bathrobe, and you're wearing your little hat tonight. I, uh, I think nobody else wore a hat. I'd wear that. I decided I wouldn't wear a hat tonight. What do you think, guys? Do I look okay? Huh? You'd fuck me. Nice f- nice f- f- Patrick says he'd fuck there. me. Yes. Uh, thank uh, thank you, Ray. Even though up. even though you were a little late to the to the party, yeah. we always enjoy having you here. We'll take you any way we thank can get you, you. Jeff. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, for all that engineering talk about having cars falling on you. And uh, <laughs> Patrick, a big thank you to you, too. Hey, why don't all of you uh, give a nice uh, wave to people and say goodbye? Because they've been so nice to watch us. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all again tomorrow night. Bye-bye. And that's our, uh, 
that's it for tonight. Let me uh, get rid of our citizens panel here so that the next uh, show can use the, uh, use the room, as it were, uh, because they use the same phone line as we use. Uh, and, hey, listen, uh, this has been a lot of fun tonight. I really enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, stay tuned now for Jack and Amy. They've got a show called The Intersection. And then at 1 o'clock, uh, at one o'clock this morning is Connections. And this is all Eastern time. And then uh, tomorrow night, 9.30. Uh, yes, it's uh, Damien and the uh, Damien Chaplin and the, uh, the Exchange. And then I'll be back here tomorrow night at 10 uh, for our Friday version with a girlfriend, hopefully, will be here. And until then, I'll see you tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>